Welcome to this Learn the Metrics video, the seventh in our 18th edition exam help series. If you are studying for the exam or maybe just wanting to update your knowledge, we are sure that you will find this video on the inspection and testing section of the regs both interesting and helpful. Inspection and testing is an important on site activity, and the Wiring Regulations book contains a lot of useful information that will be invaluable when completing installations. This is part 6 of the regulations and begins on page 228. In the 18th edition exam, expect at least four questions on this part of the regulations. Looking at the contents page for this part, on page 228, we can see that there are only two chapters to worry about and in fact only 10 pages in total. These are chapter 64 on initial verification and chapter 65 on periodic inspection and testing. Exam questions will usually make it quite clear in which chapter you will find the answer. We can begin with initial verification beginning on page 230. First of all, what is initial verification? It is the very first inspection and test on a new installation or a new circuit and it only ever happens once. Anything else at any other time is called a periodic inspection and test. If we look at regulation 641.1 at the top of page 230 it says Every installation shall, during erection and on completion before being put into service, be inspected and tested to verify, as far as it is reasonably practicable, that the requirements of the regulations have been met. In other words, we should inspect and test our work before we hand it back to the client. And regulation 641.7 tells us that on completion of the verification, according to the regulations, a certificate shall be prepared. This means that the customer should always be given a certificate for the work that has been completed, however small the job may appear. And there is an order to this, a correct process. We inspect first, then test, and only then do we finally issue a certificate. And as much of the inspecting and testing as possible should be on a dead circuit, and that's for your own safety. If any test should indicate a failure to comply with the regulations, the problem should be corrected. Any testing that might be affected by the remedial work should be repeated so that we reinspect and retest until all is satisfactory. The customer is trusting you to get it right and to make it safer for them. When and only when everything is correct do we issue a certificate. The certificate is a legal document in which you are stating that everything is 100% correct. If we have a snagging list, then we do not issue a certificate. Complete the snagging list and then write out the certificate. Looking at the inspection part, note that this process is split into two, a verification part and a checking part. The difference may seem insignificant, but in the exam you may be asked questions that deliberately play on this difference. Regulation 642.2 specifically uses the word verify and Regulation 642.3 uses the word check. Here is an example question. Which of the following is not a check that is carried out during initial verification of an installation? A. Connection of conductors B. Presence of fire barriers C. Prevention of mutual detrimental influences or D. That the installed electrical equipment is not damaged or defective. The key to this question is in the reading of the question. All four answers appear under the title inspection but you need to ask what is not a check? Answers A, B and C all appear in 642.3, the check section. Answer D appears in 642.2, the verify section. So answer D is not a check, it is a verification. 
Read the question. Understand the question. Testing is covered in section 643 from pages 231 to 236. Expect at least one question on the correct sequence of testing. The question will give you four tests. You just have to put them in the correct order. In the 18th edition exam, you will only be asked questions on the requirements for testing. You will not be questioned on the actual testing process itself. The correct sequence is how each of the tests is shown in the book on pages 231 to 236. You can work your way through all the information on those pages to find the right answer. But there is a much easier way. The first page of part 6 on page 228 shows all the tests in the correct order without all the extra wording and distraction. All the tests are listed in order from 643.2 to 643.11 in one simple list. So much easier. Remember where to find this. Here is an example question. Four tests, one, two, three, and four must be carried out. What is the correct sequence of testing from the choices A, B, C, or D? So the tests are one, insulation resistance, two, continuity of conductors, three, earth fault loop impedance, and four polarity. And shown in the yellow box are the four possible orders. But only one of them is correct. Is it A, B, C or D? Work through each sequence one at a time. A is number two first, continuity of conductors, followed by number four, which is polarity. And then number three, earth fault loop impedance. So far, so good. And finally, number one, which is insulation resistance. And this is where it all falls apart. Insulation resistance must come before polarity. So answer A is wrong. Answer B begins with number four, polarity, which is shown as coming before continuity. So answer B is also wrong. Move on to answer choice C. And here, if we work through each of the tests, we find that answer C is correct. The correct sequence, therefore, is 2, 1, 4, 3. Continuity of conductors, insulation resistance, polarity, and finally, earth fault loop impedance. The only way is to work through each option methodically and calmly. You will certainly get questions on insulation resistance testing. The table shown here is important and you should ensure that you know how to find it on page 232. Most of the time, we will be working on installations that are above 50 volts and less than 500 volts. Typically, a domestic circuit will be at 230 volts and an industrial one will be 400 volts. Therefore, it makes sense to ask questions on the middle range up to and including 500 volts. Remember, that the test voltage from your meter is 500 volts DC, as shown here, even though you are testing an AC system. And the minimum insulation resistance reading should be above 1 mega ohm, 1 million ohms of resistance. With insulation resistance, the bigger the resistance, the better. For a new installation, expect your meter to read perhaps 199 mega ohms. 299 mega ohms or even 2000 mega ohms depending on your meter's maximum range. High readings are a good pass. Note also that mega ohms begins with a capital M not a small m and exam setters will try and catch you out with this one. Just below the table there's a paragraph on what to do if surge protective devices or SPDs are installed and also what to do if they cannot be removed. Read and take note. A little further down, you will come across regulation 643.3.3. This regulation recognises that sometimes there will be electronic devices in the circuit that cannot be removed and they may be damaged by the 500 volt testing. The regulation suggests ways to get around this and you really must know this regulation. Not only will it come up as an exam question, it is very useful on site 
and will save you many hours of grief over the years. That brings us to periodic inspection and testing. Regulation 651.1 on page 237 sets out the reasons for periodic testing. Read and take note of this regulation. It is an inspection and test of any circuit or installation that is not new. And at the end of your work, you will answer the question, is the installation safe for continued use? You are going to sign a legally valid document, an electrical installation condition report. So you need to get this right. If there are problems or defects, then you must report these. So what types of questions might you expect? Periodic testing only takes up one and a bit pages in the book, so answers should be easy to find. Look at 651.2 and look especially at Note 2, which is about installations to earlier editions of the regulations. This note instructs us that if the installation was designed to a previous edition of the regulations and it remains in compliance with those regulations and it is still functioning as intended when installed and it continues to function safely, then we cannot fail that installation or circuit just because of its age. A question on note two might go something like this. What must an inspector not do? Work on a dead circuit? Partially dismantle an installation in order to carry out an inspection and test? Identify installation defects? or advise the client that installations to previous editions of the regulations are unsafe. This question requires some very careful reading. The answer is D. The inspector must not advise the client that installations to previous editions of the regulations are unsafe. And there are electricians out there right now that will tell the customer that their 16th edition consumer unit is illegal and must be changed. Whether they tell them because they want to create work by frightening unwitting householders or whether they just don't understand the regulations, I don't know. I will leave that with you to think about, but please don't do this yourselves. What is the process with inspection and testing? We we'll begin with a periodic inspection and test. This will lead us to writing out an electrical installation condition report or EICR along with the schedule of inspections and schedule of tests. The EICR will deem the installation satisfactory or unsatisfactory. If it is satisfactory, then happy days. However, if it is unsatisfactory, you will have created a list of defects and observations for the installation, along with your estimation of the level of severity of these defects. And that is the end of your responsibility as an inspector. You have inspected the installation, you have tested it, and if appropriate, you have produced a list of defects and declared it unsatisfactory for continued use. But these defects will be repaired by someone, perhaps even you. And for each repair, a minor works certificate will be produced, or sometimes a full electrical installation certificate. And when all the defects have been cleared and certified, the installation can be declared satisfactory. Two important points. The installation does not need to be reinspected. The fact that all the remedial work has been certified is good enough. For all but the most severe defects, which should be isolated, the installation can continue in use whilst the defects are being repaired, if that is the customer's choice. You have done your job as an inspector and the intention, wherever possible, should not be to leave the customer without electricity. So, on to some sample exam questions. First, the answers to last week's questions on definitions. The answers for all five questions are shown here in this table. And now to questions on inspection and testing. There are four questions to look at and, as usual, the answers will be given in the next 18th edition exam tips video. Always read the questions and decide what is it asking. And look out for not questions. They will catch you out. Especially in this part of the regulations, 
you are looking for word matches or sentence matches. And don't assume or go by gut feeling. Find the answer. After all, there are only nine pages to look at. Here is question one. Pause the video whilst you read and answer it. Give yourself two minutes if you want, the same as in the exam. The question tells you it is about initial verification. So where do you think you should start looking? How about the paragraphs under the heading initial verification on page 230? And question two, an insulation resistance test. We know there's a table for this. Where is it? Question three is about continuity of conductors. Find continuity of conductors. And finally, question four, a question on the sequence of testing. Remember what we said. There's a list of tests on the very first page of part six. Can you find it? Well, that's it. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you've increased your electrical knowledge. Please click on subscribe below. It will give you access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you'll also ensure that you don't miss our next video. By clicking on subscribe, you help us too and we do appreciate that small act. Also, typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.